Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a Sudoku game in uh, Construct 3. So you're looking at the result right now. Um, I'm just putting a, number, a couple of numbers uh, onto the board. The blue numbers are the fixed numbers that are already there and then the, the greenish numbers are the numbers I'm putting on the board. I'm just putting in, uh, some numbers on there because I don't know by heart the solution of course. Um, but once it's done, you will get dialog saying congratulations, uh, you uh, you won. Um, let's see uh, how this is done in the construct three. So this is the template, um, and the template also contains a menu which you didn't see just now, but it also has a, a menu layout and it contains a few buttons, and each button has a level instance variable. You can see it here. Um, let me select the button here, a level instance variable, um, which represents the level the user is playing. Uh, and it also has a grayscale effect, which allows us to make the levels appear gray when they are still locked. Um, so let's start by showing you the code for this uh, menu. Um, here we are. When the user clicks uh, a level button, it should uh, go to the game. Uh, layout and it should set a global variable called level um, um, but it shouldn't do anything if the level of the button is lower uh, or is higher uh, than the, the best level uh, we have up until now so only if the lower is um, if the level is lower or equal than the best level it should execute the code so this best level is loaded uh, uh, on start of layout um, and there we check uh, if the best level exists and if it does if it does it will get uh, on item exist event firing and uh, otherwise it will get an on item missing firing so whenever the item is missing of course we initialize the level the best level and we refresh the buttons and if it's not missing we just get it we wait for it using the asynchronous functionality of construct um, we set the best level to the item value and then we refresh the buttons as well. So this refresh buttons function actually is a function I created here. We just pick all the level buttons and for each button we just disable or enable the gray effect um, whether if it's um, a lower or a higher uh, than the best level. So that's a very easy menu here. Let's close this one and let's go back to the objects uh, layout here. The objects layout uh, contains the nine tiles of the game that can be found. Uh, all tiles are grouped in a common tiles behavior and the family, our brother here. This is the family and they share a, a common behavior. First of all, they have the drag drop. Uh, we just can drag them around. Um, and there's two instance variables, number and fixed. Number is actually the number of the tile. So one's contain a one, two, it's contain a two. Um, and the instance variable fixed denotes if the, if the, um, if the tile is fixed on the board and it can't, uh, it can't be moved or if it is not fixed, it can be moved around. Um, there's also uh, an effect, the replace color effect. Um, where we can uh, replace the greenish uh, a greenish color which dies are originally by a bluish color so we can make them blue if they are fixed the alternative would be to have a different set of tiles for fixed but uh, in my experience this is far easier to do just activate or deactivate in effect it's far easier to have the, having um, a variable number of uh, tiles in your game. So let me see then. Here is the main layout of the game. It consists out of a number of layers. The background layer contains a great part of the background sprites, uh, both of the layout and of the grid. So there's also a background on the grid here. It's also uh, uh, on the background layer. The large blocks are the black back black backgrounds here. Those are black backgrounds and on top of that there are placeholders and these placeholders are on the placeholders layer. Um, there are two types of placeholders, the white placeholder which are regular placeholders and start placeholders which are the, the placeholders here in the pinkish color. 
Uh, the regular place callers are part of the Sudoku grid here, and they hold two instance variables, call and row, column and row actually. Um, each placeholder has a set of column and row coordinates, each starting at 0, ranging to 8. Uh, the start placeholders are the placeholders of the tiles that are not yet placed on the board. Um, the start placeholders only have one instance variable called number, which holds a number from 1 to 9. Uh, the puzzles actually are stored in an array, maintained in a project JSON file. There's a three-dimensional array, where rows and columns are the rows and columns of the Sudoku board, and the depth of the array are the number of levels. Um, so let me show you the JSON file here. So here we have a number from 0 to 8 at the columns, 0 to 8 in the rows. Um, so those are all of the numbers of the Sudoku board in this level. You can see here it's three-dimensional, it's got the depth, but there's only one sheet right now because I've only got one level, of course, but you're free to add more levels if you want to. The game already takes into account that there can be multiple levels. Um, but as you can see here, there sometimes is a number in the cell and sometimes there is a prefix with an F. The F stands for fixed. So the game code, as you'll see in a minute, uh, will take into account that if it starts with an F, it should be already on the board and it should not be movable. Um, and all the rest will be empty as long as uh, the user doesn't drag a tile onto that place. So let's look at the code here. On a uh, start of layout, on the initialization part, what we do is we load the puzzle JSON file using the AJAX plugin and we wait for it using the asynchronous functionality of construct um, and we load it into the JSON file and we make sure that the dialog is hidden, which is the dialog that's telling you congratulations. Actually, the one here. Huh? Let's see how this works. This dialog is very uh, simple. Um, we have a dialog logic. Whenever we click the dialog button, we go to the menu, um, and there's a show and a hide dialog um, function. Show dialog just shows the dialog using a setting by setting the dialog layer visible, and we hide it by setting the layer invisible. And we make sure that the dialog button is active and inactive by uh, just enabling, activating, and deactivating the group it's in. Um, that's very simple. Um, Furthermore, on the initialization part here, um, we loop through all the elements in the array, x, y, z elements, and retain the values for the correct level. So we loop through every level, and only for that level, which is, or only for that z value, which is the level, we uh, do something. So we pick both the regular placeholder based on the color and row coordinates, and the start placeholder based on its number. Um, if the puzzle starts with a value F, which means fixed, it needs to be placed immediately on the placeholder and marks as fixed. Otherwise, it should be placed on a starting placeholder, so one of the pink ones. And that's what we do here. So we pick a placeholder based on its call and row is X and Y. And then we just pick a start placeholder based on its number. But we check if there's an F, if the puzzle's value starts with an F, we uh, take the last part, else we take the full part. That's it. And then the tile object is created based on the value in the array, making sure the F value is stripped. Uh, the starting position also depends on whether the starting value with an F or not, of course. So this is what it does. It determines the tile name based on whether it starts with an F. And whether it starts with an F or not, it's the X coordinate of a regular placeholder or of a start placeholder. That's it. So we pick the last created tile. Um, we set the fixed flag uh, of the tile, and if it starts with an F, we enable the effect. The place color becomes blue, blue uh, rather, and else we disable so it remains greenish. And that's it. Um, so as far as interaction goes, uh, there's only the drag start and drag drop. Uh, functionality here. Uh, actually in drag start we just uh, stop the dragging if uh, the tile is fixed. Um, on drag drop we check if uh, the tile we're dragging is uh, overlapping the background which is the gray background of the board. This one here. Um, 
if it does that we pick the nearest tiles uh, over the over the over the tile so we can snap to that position actually um, we set the position to the placeholder and we uh, check every time a tile is uh, dropped we check if it is solved and we do this using the check for solve function I'll explain in a minute um, and we set this variable is called solved if it's not overlapping the board however but it's overlapping a start placeholder we pick the start placeholder nearest to the x and y coordinates again and the number has to be the same number as the tile we are dragging and in that case we snap to the start placeholder that's it um, once it's solved so the solved variable is equals to one we just add one to the best level and we store it immediately and we show the dialog that's it so finally there's the check for solve uh, check for solve function well what we do here we uh, re the report the return value defaults to one and it resets to zero whenever a place however has been found which is not correct or uh, there is no placeholder found at all so what we do here is we first set found to zero um, and then we try and pick the tile over overlapping uh, a placeholder here um, one to, first we're, we're looping through every placeholder and if a tile is not found over the placeholder this will not do anything so it won't pick anything so this code will not be uh, executed it will remain zero um, and the function will remain uh, the return value will remain zero because if found is zero then return value is zero so if it's picked we should say okay the, the tile is in there then we still need to check if the tile is the correct number or not um, so uh, what we see here if the tile numbers uh, is different from the tile number in the puzzles JSON file stripping away the F of course um, then it's okay if it's not okay we set the return value to zero and that's it that's the check for solve uh, function and basically the entire JSON um, the entire so that's it this was the entire uh, Sudoku game um, so as always please uh, like and subscribe um, and for those of you who are interested, I will leave a link to the Sura store in the uh, description below for you guys to check out. Thank you for watching.